Hi everybody, today we're going to go over the brand new Hike Vision ANPR camera or automatic license plate recognition camera along with a companion NVR that records the information from the camera to the NVR so you don't need to have the, the SD card. So stand by and here comes the video. Hi everybody, Marty the Surveillance Guy here, bringing to you the brand new Hike Vision license plate camera, now available in the USA. It's a, what is it, a DS2CD4A26 FWD-IZHS8 slash P. That's what this one is. So, anyways, one of the first things I've noticed on this thing is they've got this, they've gone to a plastic a plastic sunscreen and they have a little thing here so you can't really slide this forward but if you take the screw loose you can slide it more forward and also underneath they've uh, turned it they've made this area oop, they've made this area here black underneath and now the infrared you don't see the IRs inside or on the front anymore so i don't know where the irs are or if it's on there it should according to all the information and the people i've talked to it has ir up to 50 meters on it i guess we'll find out how this thing works so here's the first look at the brand new hike vision camera this thing is massive i mean it's it's gigantic but uh it's what it is so we'll find out how well it works and we'll continue on okay so we're outside here where we've now mounted the new cameras up the pole and uh, we're gonna see how well they operate in getting license plate numbers out here so we've got our street that way everybody knows so well and our ever so famous park bench over there and the other direction here so right now we're currently shooting about a hundred 120 feet 150 feet out up the up and down the road so anybody that travels up and down the up and down the roadway their license plate number automatically gets captured and uh, recorded. So there's the there's the system. Okay, so you decided to get an ANPR camera. Well, there is something that you should know before you do that. You need to know the height of the pole, the length of the focal distance you're going to be working on, whether you're going to be over the road, to the side of the road, and there's quite a few different things because this thing will do several different lanes of traffic. You have to have everything the proper size, the proper distance. There's quite a few different things. So if you look in the book here, you'll see that there's this little tiny picture with little tiny cars and little tiny angles, and there's really a lot to it. So at that point, once you figure out where you're going to do it, and once you get it up, that's when you can play with things. So let's go see what's in the configuration menu. Okay, so here's the configuration setup. I don't have a screen capture program, so we just kind of have to bear with me on this stuff because I'll probably never, ever get one. Um, so here's the configuration system on this uh, unit. We have a selection here where we can have either normal or road. So you click it over to road, and what that does is it uh, gives you some automatic settings. So one of the first things you're going to want to do is you need to determine how fast the vehicles go by. And that uh, you can determine your vehicle speed by setting your exposure time. I currently have mine set at, uh, what is it, uh, 1750. So that'll give me up to about 60 miles an hour or just a little under. Uh, you want to set your gain to 20 is what they recommend. The less gain, the better. Uh, your iris set it to auto. Now, when you set it to road and not normal, what it does, it also changes your focus. Your focus setting will be set to semi-auto. I prefer to use mine on manual. It's just uh, one less thing to have move around because when it goes from daytime to nighttime, there is a slight change in, in focus. But since the picture is dark, it really doesn't focus that well. Or if you accidentally zoom in or zoom out, uh, in uh, in semi-auto, it'll make the thing change. So I just keep it in manual. Uh, Day-night switch, you're going to want to have it set to auto. 
otherwise in uh, with the road thing, it says uh, triggered by video. Well, I have yet to see if that really works that well or not. Uh, so I just leave it on auto. I set it to set mine to auto. Uh, sensitivity, you set it to four and turn your supplemental light on. Mode is auto. Now, you don't use the backlighting or WDR. If you do, that'll screw things up. Uh, your white balance, it's set currently in number two here. Uh, I haven't played around much with that. Image enhancement, uh, noise reduction set to 50. If you have too much noise reduction, you get a ghosting effect. Uh, so far, leaving it at 50 seems to be just fine. Uh, video adjustments, you can, you know, change around your capture mode and things like that. And you have a local output to a standard, standard video. I don't use that, so I just turn it off. Now we get into the road traffic where you go in here and you enable your road traffic up here on the upper, upper left of the screen. You have vehicle detection. So what you do is you go ahead and you set your left border and your right border. Uh, you can also change your plate size from large or small plates. This is, of course, the U.S. and not other countries where you have to set the pixel size. I mean, that was one of the things that they did. I don't know if you still do that on the newer firmwares, but you would set your pixel size. You have your, your selector mode, which is alarm input, meaning if a vehicle drives up and you have a beam or something like that, it can set it off. Otherwise, you set it on city streets like I have it there. Uh, your arming and linkage schedule. Now, you don't need to have... Uh, an SD card in the unit. I currently do have SD cards in there. Uh, so if you have, oh, it also has a blacklist and a whitelist and other that you can set up on this thing. We'll get into that later on. But uh, with the SD cards, if you don't have an NV car, an NVR, you're going to need to have SD cards. One thing with the NVR is there's only specific units that record the information uh, to the NVR. And we'll get into that here in a little bit. So in the uh, real-time results, as the vehicle passes through, it captures the date and time. And it also figures out what the plate number is. And it stores that. Tells you your lane. Tells you whether you're going a forward direction or a reverse direction. And then you can have it set up to your matching results. Now, the matching, is matching results, that is your black and white list, which you can blacklist or whitelist license plates. And then you have an other list. So what is it? It, it can hold up to 2048 license plate in both the black and white list in total. So you can't have more than 2048 license plates. And if you got more than 2048 license plates, you got a lot of cars going in and out of your neighborhood. So, if you wanted to whitelist all your neighbor's cars, you could put it in there. And then when you uh, go through and you look at the real-time results, it'll tell you that you're on the whitelist or the blacklist, if you don't like the neighbor, or the other list. Uh, I haven't gotten around to making lists yet. That'll be a long and drawn-out process if I do that. So uh, let's go to see what type of pictures it creates. So... This is the picture. So you go over here and you click on vehicle detection and then you click on search. And then it pulls up all your different plates and numbers that uh, it collects and stores on the SD card. So there's all these different plate numbers that it has stored. You can select either one or all of them and you can download the thing. Uh, well, let's just pick one. So let's just take that one there we'll tell it download so that's downloaded and let's open up the file where it's at come on file open up okay and there's what it looks like that's uh that's a picture of it as you can see there's our plate number right there exactly what it says that looks pretty good so there's our plate number it gets that yay that works just fine um, so let's go back to configuration here. Now, uh, you can use this camera system on an NVR and not have to have the, uh, SD card in the camera. 
So the cool thing about that is let's go over here to the NVR and we'll see what the NVR shows. Okay, now here's our NVR video. This is directly from the new NVR. This, uh, go into the menu here. Let's see what we've got. This is a DS7716NI-I4 slash 16P. Uh, you have to have that particular series of NVRs. You have to have the I4 series of NVRs and the latest firmware. This is the 3.4.93. Uh, this NVR actually came with the firmware before this, so it was missing a few cool items like uh, vehicle recording. So in here, we have you go to your camera setup, and we go to VCA, and we'll pick our, pick our license plate camera. So with the new firmware, it didn't have the vehicle detection. Uh, listed in the uh, VCA. So now you could set up your vehicle detection stuff pretty much through this whole NVR right now. Um, you can use your blacklist, your whitelist. You can get into your picture so you can have your picture quality and your size. Uh, one neat thing, though, that it looks like that uh, Hike Vision is going to be doing here soon. Let's see if we can move the camera in on this. Down here... You see they have these things that are grayed out. We have the vehicle brand, scene, a vehicle color, and a vehicle type, and a scene name. I would imagine that they're going to be coming up with new firmware for the cameras that's going to figure out what the vehicle brand and vehicle type is. So you'll get the you know make and model of the vehicle along with the license plate, which that would be really cool if that is to come to flourishing here. So I can only hope that that's going to happen. Uh, we're going to cancel out of that. You can import and export your your uh, blacklist and whitelist using the, the thing over here on the side. So let's see. Uh, what else do we have in here? Um, oh, that's right. You'll need to set up. Uh, so if you record, if you want it to record the video of the vehicle passing through, you'll need to go into your recording configuration and motion detection and you'll set up motion detection for your plate camera so i just put up two lines here so that way as something passes through it records that it says oh there's motion uh record that motion whether it's a human or a vehicle it'll record it but at least that way you have the vehicle passing through and you don't have to rely on just the thing catching the plate number itself it's always best to have a second way of making sure that you get the plate because sometimes this thing gets the plates and sometimes it doesn't that's you know technology because you're dealing with real world situations you have dirty plates plates out of plates out of place um there's like anything that can happen so set up your motion detection for that and that'll help to uh Make sure that you have the, the money shot that you're looking for. You can set up your record quality. Uh, right now I've got it set up to 60 frames a second on the license plate capture cameras, which is more than enough to get me a nice, steady, clean picture of the license plates. And now for the really cool thing is you have with this new firmware that they just came out with, you can go into the VCA search. So if you happen to have one of these $16,000 cameras and thermal imaging, you can get your thermal imaging pictures from it. Or you have, you know, behavior, face search. Oh, what do we have on face search? Let's go through and see what it pulls up for faces. I haven't done that. Uh, I like that. There's faces. And why are we getting such a bad light here? There we go. Let's see what Junior is doing. Yeah, one of the neighbor kids comes by, looks up at the camera, and it says, Ah, oh, I got your face. I got your face. There you go. So, 
Uh, that's what the face detection does if you have a smart camera. Uh, but, you know, if you have it set too high, it also picks up, you know, strange things that aren't faces. Sometimes it'll f pick up things like uh, a dog's butt and say that's a face. But that's okay. We're looking at plate search. So let's go to plate search here. And now we can pull up imaging of the plates. And here are the plate numbers that you get. It also gets other numbers besides just the plates, as you can see by this one here. Uh, that's actually a number that's on a tractor somewhere. So it picked that up off of the tractor. I guess it's, oh, it's right. It's like right there. So it picked that up for a plate number. That was first thing this morning. Let's go to another page. So we have all sorts of, all sorts of license plates that it picks up. I know that it picks up out of state plates. Uh, here's a, here's the this one here. That's not a plate number, but it does give us the garbage truck that it's on and the number that's on the back of the garbage truck. <laughs> so it's kind of cool that the VCA search does plate numbers and it gets you the plate. You can of course pick your plate. And then you can play the video, and it shows the video of the vehicle driving through. Well, that guy's really rolling slow, huh? Must be looking at the new cameras. There's another vehicle, and he'll drive through. Try this one. See, that guy's driving faster. Okay, so there he goes, probably about 35 miles an hour or so. Now, a really cool feature that they have is this thing here. Uh, you can click on filter, and it brings up however many times that vehicle has passed through. So let's uh, backspace, delete that. And we'll just pull up all these random different different things here. So let's let's go through and pick a plate. And we'll click on filter over here. Okay. So it says that plate has passed through the camera system three different times. So it caught that particular plate number three different times. So it can filter out by plates also, which is actually, I didn't expect that, but that's a kind of a cool feature. So that'll make it easy to blacklist and whitelist vehicles. So there you go. That's uh, pretty much the overview of this thing and how it works along with uh, some explanation of what's inside of the, uh, the, the firmware. So, so far so good. I really like it. It's uh Fairly cool and interesting, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of technical setup to begin with, and it's a really steep learning curve. Then you have just, you know, days and hours and hours of fine-tuning and tweaking it to get it right. Till then, this is Marty, your surveillance guy, and you guys have a good day. Bye-bye.